Hello again and welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be, hopefully, um, an easy step-by-step -step to stove brewing, uh, taking some things, uh, hopefully, a little bit back to uh, basics. Uh, it's like an introductory, really. I want to try and get people involved, um, some of my uh, viewers, and see, you know, I'm open to any questions and just really, just to say that we can make some really good um, beer uh, on the stove with possibly much of the stuff you've already got um, and then purchasing is quite minimal. Um, what I would say is that Brooklyn Brew Shop beer making book is a really good start to all rain brewing on the stove. Um, they do sell um, like a kit, um, so they get a brew, they sell a good kit. I think the malt miller, but the links are down below in my description. If you go on there, you'll see different information about what you need. Um, what the Brooklyn Blue Brew book basically says you need is like a demijohn. They say two pans, but I've simplified that to one pan. And the way I've done that is you have one pan, but you have like what we call the brew in the bag method. Uh, this is the bag that I use for my pan. You can see that's that's used and then it gets washed and it's used again. Um, but you can also, in like your Sainsbury's, you have like what they call like a laundry bag in the packet. You can go and get one of them. I think they're about £2.50 or something and there's about two sizes in there. And this is easy. You just put your all, all grains in, you zip it up, and then when you put it into your pan, it doesn't come to a boil, it only goes to about 70 degrees at max. And I've used that loads of times and it's really good because you just put your grains in, zip it up, and it's like one big mash bag, like a tea bag to be honest. And also these little bags as well. I use these for filtering. So I sort of, there's a step where they say use a um, sieve. Well, what I don't use a sieve. I boil this, I sanitize it, I put it over the funnel then I pour my word, you'll see that, my word into a demijohn. So these are one of the things you're gonna to have to purchase. So a demijohn, it's got a little temperature sticker on there so you can check fermentation because really, uh, when you start out, you're just gonna be fermenting this in the best, warmest place in your house really, um, or shed uh, for some people. Don't got a bit of water in that because I've washed it out. So yeah, demijohn, the sticker. Some of the kits come with that, you have to check them out below. Hydrometer to check the measurements of your, the sugar, what's in the final before it goes into uh, the fermenter. That gives you the reading, your original gravity, and then you do one at the end of fermentation, and that's how you work out your alcohol. Um, to say you get a thermometer, it's easy enough to get one of the glass thermometers. Again, some of the kits do that, so you don't need to buy it. I have one of these ones, just like I say, it's just progressing really. But at first, you don't you don't need it at all. You need the bung and the airlock. That's another thing you you you'll need. Um, like I say, the pan. Use most people have got a spoon in the house. Uh, and then towels, towels to wrap around your pan to keep that temperature best you can. Um, really stove top, really in the house. Some people um, put the pan in a oven when they get to that temperature and like the oven the oven light just to try and keep temperature or the oven on the lowest setting there's all different ways of doing it but the simple way some towels wrap it around or an old jacket anything as long as you make sure you turn the stove off before you do that and that'll help uh, keep it uh, warm for that hour uh, what I haven't brought down yet is the fan I just use a fan it's not essential and it just helps get some of that steam out the window, Ooh, I'm the light there, out the window and out the door as well. So yeah, so really I'm gonna hopefully try and make, show you how simple it can be and it can produce some really great results, some really good beer. Um, and I'd encourage you, if, if you're thinking of going into all grain and you, you don't want to get the big systems or you just want to have a step, Go and have a look at the kits below in the description uh, and then the majority of stuff I'm certain you'll have already in the kitchen anyway. 
Um, and then if you start to enjoy it, you could move up to the bigger systems. I enjoy it, but I still like this the way it's doing it. And because I get lots more choice, I can brew more often. Doesn't take as up as much space. And yeah, there's there's them advantages. Disadvantages: you're only getting five liters. If it's a fantastic beer, you got to brew it again. Where most home brewers do 20 liters, so it's like four brew days uh, for me to get to 20 liters. But then four brew days could be different styles. So I'm, I'm happy enough with that. And I don't get bored of the, the drinks then and they're not hanging around forever. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the advantages. So you can see now my lights up, camera set up, cans here. I'll do some footage, some talk through. And uh, yeah, I'm, I apologize, it could be a long video. Uh, but if you stick with me, hopefully I can make this as simple as possible. And like I say, I'm open to any questions and yeah, just, you know, like I say, put it below or if you can DM me on uh, Instagram as well. Okay, so I'll crack on and uh, I'll see you in a bit. So what I'm showing you here is, so there's a pan, simple. This, this pan is a 14 litre one. You can get an 11 litre one. Uh, the one I've got on the stove at the moment, that's a 17 litre pan. Uh, just let, lets me gives me the option really of doing bigger, bigger brews. But if you're gonna do like the five litres, Go for an 11 litre pan. Um, I always say try and get one with a, the lid without the holes. Just helps keep that uh, heat in when you're doing the mash. Also, I find essential, get a book, get a notebook, write down recipes, write down anything, any notes, it really is. Um, what I'm showing you here is, <clears throat> these are my grains. So this is gonna be a smash beer today. It's a simple beer, just wanted to do a really simple beer just to try and show uh, the process and how easy it can be. So this is my <clears throat> grains. This is one kilo of uh, pale malt. I've got some Sabro hops. Some got a very small amount going in at 60. The uh, majority of the hops going in at uh, Whirlpool. Um, Demijohn, like I said, Demijohn. That's my thermometer. A spoon, a jug, funnel. Like I say, these bags, little felt like little uh, bags, like a straining bag. Use that instead of using the uh, strainer, uh, there's the airlock, there's a the hydrometer, there's the towels and that's my bag that I used for brewing. So like I said before you can really make this quite simple. Um, most people probably got a pan big enough. The grains you can buy in a kit you can order it so whatever you can look at different styles. If you go to the descriptions below get a brew do them, small stovetop kits, you pick and they send you the grains already crushed, the hops weighed out and, and also the yeast, so you're ready to go. So yeah, so don't worry too much about that at all. Um, most people have got a jug, a spoon. These, you can, like I say, you can pick these up from the supermarket, these little straining bags, easily enough. Demijohn's probably about eight pound from Wilco's. You can get one, or you can get one in the kits. Like I say, description below again. You don't need that thermometer. You can get yourself one of the little glass thermometers. The bung and the airlock, again, a couple of pound. Uh, that's the measuring the sugar basically uh, for the original gravity in the wort so yeah so that's just really again just a close-up uh, of the kit so yeah someone that's talking about the beer book um, it tells you in here the kit so it says airlock fermenter racking cane that's when it comes to bottling but you can see in this book they simplify it again and this is what you basically get within their kit so yeah it really is uh, worth it. But like I say, look at other ones, get a brew, do a fantastic kit as well. Um, this is the basically the strainer, but I take that out and I use a bag, find that easier as a funnel. Um, and then it just goes on, it tells you about ingredients, malts, and then you've got recipes. So you've got all different ones, all different recipes in here. Um, and then you can build these recipes on like the malt miller, um, get a brood, you can just input this, the grains, and they'll send you the, the actual kit out. Uh, there's an everyday IPA. So yeah, if you can if you can get out of this book, it's a really good first step, honestly. Can't go wrong. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna do is measure out your water. I do this the night before to try and get rid of uh, chlorine and stuff. Uh, I, do, I do put a lid on there, you can put it on loosely. You can use half a candy tablet as well to help get rid of chlorine. Break it up, 
put into that water. But it just helps get rid of the chlorine out of your water. Uh, try and do that like the night before, I'd say is best. So the first thing I've got to do now is get this lid on, get this temp of this water up to, for me, this amount of water for my little recipe here, about 70, so I can hit about 67 when I put the grains in for the mash. So I'm gonna aim for 70 degrees. So yep, yeah, so the first thing for me to do, get the stove on, get this up to 70 degrees, and then I'll be mashing in. As you can see here, so I use this digital thermometer. So that probe is going in there, the lid's on, and I'm just waiting now for, hit, for the uh, temperature, temperature to hit 70. This will alarm, and I can get on to the next step. Um, I could put my bag in now as well if I wanted to, or I could put it in when it's getting nearer to that 70 degrees. It doesn't really make much difference. So yeah, just wanted to show you, that's why I use that. It's just a little bit easier than dipping the glass one in, but I would recommend it. if you're starting off, just get a glass one and just keep dipping it in and then, you know, going from there. So as you can see, I've got to the 70, turn it off, stove that is, <laughs> and then I'll mash in. 70 degrees, so we've got to the what we call like the strike water temp. Uh, now it's to put the, the grains in. So let me get around the camera, make it easier. Uh, put the grains into the bag, just gently pour it in. Keep stirring really, to be honest. Stir them grains in, because what you don't want at this point is a load of uh, dough balls. So if you can really try your best to just prevent that. Um, dough balls is where you see all the grains starting to clump um, and then the water doesn't basically absorb into the grain and you don't extract as much sugars and then there's a problem with your efficiency at the end and yeah so that's really what we're trying to avoid here so I'm going to put this in and then I want to reach my mash temperature which is like I say about 67 for this actual brew. So once we've got these in, 67, and then cover them with a towel, the lid, sorry, get, get the pan covered with a towel, and then let it sit for about an hour. See now, how it's a little bit simpler having the, the brew in the bag, so the, the grains are going straight into the bag, rather than into the pan. Um, which Brooklyn Brew Shop's book tells you to put them straight into the pan and then use that strainer, but I just find this a whole lot easier. Okay. So we're now, you can see, 68. All them greens have gone in. No clumps. You can see it's all loose. So all the actual strike water, all the water, when you can do this, just do it this way, brew in the bag way, is in the pan. So there's no need for two pans, all the water's in there. And it just makes life a little bit easier doing it this way. So as you can see, them grains are all well and truly in. Again, 67, 67.5. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to put the lid on and then I'm going to put the towels on top. Lid is on, so now just really get the towels on, set a timer for an hour, let it mash, so it's basically steeping for an hour, get all that sugars extra extracted from the grains, make a nice wort for the uh, yeast to ferment after we've done the, the boil. But yeah, just, just basically keep it keep it warm keep it on the stove you've got that option there of a stove if you check it say every 15 minutes and it's dropping below way below I'm, when i'm saying this will probably drop one one and a half to two degrees over an hour um but you can always turn the stove back on just heat it up slightly stir it and then back on with the towels so yeah it is quite simple
So what I would say is whilst you're uh, mashing, it's a good time to start to clean, sanitize anything that's going to touch the wort at the end. Just get it done, get it sanitized, get it soaking in sanitizer. Um, this is my, I use basically Star Sun, make up a five litre um, bottle of it. Um, they say you, know, you can use it a few times, but I always check. You can check the pH as well, but that's getting a bit too scientific. Uh, but really, so I've got that made up. That's my sanitizer. There's my Demijohn cleaned. There's your jug, funnel. This is my blow-off tube that I've made. It's made out of some straws uh, and some tubing. So initially, start off with putting like a blow-off tube in here uh, before you put the airlock in, in case there's any, like the fermentation really kicks off. So just really, I'm just gonna sanitize all this and it'll be ready at the very end. So really, just use this time now whilst you're mashing to get all your equipment that's gonna touch that beer, well, sorry, wort, before it's beer, um, at the end so just get it all sanitized including that remember that that bag that strain in the bag that's going to go in here get that what, what i do that to be honest i boil that first and then i star san it or sanitize it so yeah just make sure that you're doing that it's good practice just to get doing that whilst it's uh mashing in and then you can just keep shaking the damage on once it's got some in there you can put these in there i put them like a tray with the star san in so just soaking in it so yeah, it's just good practice really. So I just showed you there, so I use one of these tubs. Um, sanitizer in there now, jugs in there. See that little bag's in there as well. Blow off tube I made, the bung, um, the funnel, and then you can see the damage on. That's got star sun in, keep, keep shaking it. And just another thing as well, I always make star sun up and keep it in a little spray bottle. Really handy to have. Uh, but yeah, just really showing you how I do it. Try and make it simple whilst I'm mashing, using up that time. So we're just coming up to the end of the mash now. That's going to go off in a minute. What we could do now is we could get the temperature raised to about 75, 77 degrees for a mash out. And it just basically, it's, it's, an enzyme. it's like the enzymes of starch is uh, sort of make the liquid a bit uh, more fluid so when you're pulling them grains out you're getting uh, it's washing through um, you can see that going off there now so we'll take the towels off and I'll uh, get a the measure the uh, sorry the temperature up oh, so turn the stove back on try and get it to like I say 75 77 somewhere in there um, and then give it a couple of stirs then I'm going to drain that bag. So yeah, so you can do the mash out if you want to. It's not essential. It just helps that grain and the liquid sort of separate as such. And you're getting more liquid out of them grains. It just thins it down a bit. Uh, and there's some enzymatic starch conversions as well. Okay. One thing that I do there, as you can see, I get the bag, just twist it around my hand. The temperature gauge is in there get that water to like 75, 76 degrees, then just let the bag go back in and give it a stir. I don't want the bag really to catch at the bottom of the pan. That's the only reason I'm just lifting it slightly out, just holding it here until it gets to that temperature. So you can see we hit the 77. So what I'm gonna do now is knock the heat off again and then drop this bag in yeah, temp out and then just give it a stir and then 10 minutes just to just basically like I say it's just to get more of that liquid out once I start to strain it from the bag it does some chemistry as well with the starches but it's not essential so you, you can totally skip that and just go straight to straining that bag after you've done the, the mash out. Okay, so I'll let that now sit. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. Like I say, this is, I've done a mash out, it's not essential, 
But what I need to do now is strain the grain. First thing I need to do is put some gloves on because uh, believe it or not, that bag is gonna be hot. And then another tip is to use some sort of rack if you've got anything at all, like uh, the rack from your grill, anything like that. And I'll show you why it's a, it's a good tip. So you can pull your grains, see it's draining there. So you get some sort of rack, and you just put it over the top, and you just let them sit. You can let it drain through. There's all different thoughts about squeezing the Bruna bag system. Um, I've never had a problem. They say you can extract tannins and stuff, but I don't know if that's ever been proven. No idea, but I just squeeze it to get as much liquid as possible. That's another reason why it's good to have this rack. It just helps you put some pressure on, but believe me, the heat is unbelievable. What I would do now is turn the heat back on. Because you want to try and get that liquid now up to boiling temperature and uh, once it starts to get there that hot break you need to keep an eye on it make sure you're not going to get any sort of boil over because of the amount of protein that builds up uh, within that wort um, so yeah that'll be the next step so I'll move on okay another tip is Get the pan lid and you can use that as well. It protects your hands from the heat. Just put some pressure on that bag. It's another tip really. So let's move on. So as you can see now, just coming to the boil, that's starting to get like a rolling boil. So it's time really for the first hop addition. This is going to be a 60 minute boil. It's going to be a 60 minute hop addition for bittering. It's going to be a single malt, single hop beer. So we've only got a couple of grams here just to get a bit of bittering from these hops which uh, because I'm doing a single malt, single hop, the actual beer is going to be single hops with Sabro. So you understand why I'm only using like two grams because these are best Whirlpool dry hot. So it's the only hot side addition I'm going to do. So two grams, Sabro. I'm going to go in. So I'll come back. So really now, it's just letting this boil for the full 60 minutes. Now in some recipes, you could have additions of hops at 30 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes. And all you do is set your calculator. So if you've got a 60 minute boil and you've got to do a 15 minute addition, just do a 45 minute alarm and then you've got your 15 minutes and so on. So if you get a recipe that's got that, that's the best way to do it. This recipe of mine, it's a simple, it's one hop addition at the beginning, then another addition at Whirlpool, which I'll show you, and then it's a dry hop. So really just simplify how easy it can be to do this stove top brewing. Okay, so that's the 60 minutes up. Turn the stove off, and what I need to do now, I need to get a Whirlpool going but I need to get this down to about 82 to 80 degrees. So add in that Whirlpool addition. Um, so really what I do, it's killed the heat. And I'm starting to whirl it around in the pan now, the works. Um, I've got my sanitized thermometer. I'll drop that in and I'll get it down to like I say, that desired temp to drop them Whirlpool hop additions in. Um, so 
yeah, this is going to take me a few minutes, so back in a minute. Okay, so now we're just approaching the temperature, so that alarm will go off. Now take the probe out, and I'll start my whirlpool, just to get these hops put in. And then I'll put the lid on. I'm going to let it stand. It's coming up to that temp now. So we'll let it stand for 30 minutes with the lid on for these hops to do the work. There we go, so I'll take the throw about. Let's get the whirlpool going for these hops. So this is a Sabro. Let me turn that alarm off. Sorry, Sabro hops. Going into the whirlpool now. Like I say, it's sitting here for about 30 minutes steeping. Then it'll be time to see that whirlpool there. Time to cool. In. Let's get the lid on. Okay, back for the cooling. It's had its uh, 30 minutes done now. Getting it into the sink with water and little tip freeze bottles with water in and then use them instead of using like, loads of ice, because what you can do, once these melt, put them back in the freezer, and they're ready for next time as well. And you just get that water cooled down, you can check on it again, say 10 minutes, get that temperature down to pitching temp. If you need to uh, refill the sink, sometimes, I'd like say maybe twice, maximum three times uh, I'd have to put some more water in the sink but it normally works fairly well this way it's getting that work called I leave the lid on that's the other thing I don't want any nasties nothing at all so I always uh, make sure I leave that lid on as well so yeah that's the uh, that's the best way for cooling once you've done the stovetop brew okay so sanitized little filtered bag which you use put that on the sanitized funnel put it around and this just really gets rid of uh, having to use the, the sieve um, so we've got it now in the demijohn so let me move this sanitized tub away hopefully you can see that and what I'm going to do now is pour the cooled down work into it. Then you pitch the yeast. So that's cooled down now to a good pitching temperature. So straight in. And doing it this way, you can introduce some of that oxygen that the yeast needs as well. So get a bit of height on it, straight through that funnel, creating as much oxygen as possible. Put it in there. It's raining. And all it needs to do now is pitch the yeast. Okay, so I've already made the yeast. So when you do it, you more than likely use dry yeast. This is just my yeast that I've been using, so don't get too, don't get too bothered about that. Dry yeast, fantastic. You, for this sort of uh, size, you'll use about four grams, three to four grams. They come in 11 gram packets, so you get a few brews out of them, and you can sprinkle it straight on top. Uh, but I've got this uh, yeast going, I've had it now for a while. So into that sanitized funnel, straight into the beer. A little bit left over there, so the yeast. 
So that, now what I've got to do, I'll put my bung on, <clears throat> my bung in there, and all I'll do then is just give it a bit more agitation, just get it going in there. I'll check the um, hydrometer, put a blow off tube on, and then it's going to be sat in the the best place in the house where you're going to get sort of con consistent temperatures. Um, that's what you really need, consistent temperature. So there you can see. That's what the brew days bought us. A nice golden, even though it's a single malt, it's a lovely colour at this point. That'll clear during fermentation. So, yeah. Right, so I'm just checking the temp temperatures now because you want it about 20 degrees uh, for the hydrometer and we're pretty much at there. So this is just checking the original gravity now. We was aiming for the 1043. It's looking like a 4% beer on this uh, single malt, single hot beer. So hopefully we're somewhere around that area. Notice I put a tub in underneath because it does have that overspill. Sometimes better just to give it a bit of a spin. It's never easy just to try and get it. So we are, yeah, I'm happy with that because each line is like a two and that's just in between the next two. So we've got a good 1043. Happy with that as well. Um, so now come back and I'll just show you the blow off tube we're going to put in there. So 1043 beer, absolutely spot on. Chuff with that. Okay, so I mentioned a blow off tube. So, what I have is like you get for like kids infused tea bags for cold tea and star sun in. I've got a hole in the top, so my tube goes into here. And the idea is I just made this basically made this up uh, some tubes and some straws. So, you got a bit of it that uh, let's goes together and it's easy to take down and clean this way. So I put the tube on, put it into the bung, push it in, there's a blow off tube, like I say some rigid parts from the straw. Take this bung off, this one goes in there and then the other end into the tub like that. It starts to ferment and if, it, if you had just an airlock in there, you'd probably blow the airlock off. But because of this now, it's going to come through and any problems will go into that tub. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. All that's left for me to do there now, what I do on here is write down what the beer is and the original gravity in the day. So, yeah. So, as you can see now, so it's a smash beer. It's a US... USA hop, which, uh, well, it's a Sabro, um, and it's 104 for your original gravity, and we've got the date, length for the 5th, 22. This will now ferment probably a couple of weeks, and then the next, well, actually, I've got to do a dry hop about three days before bottling, so I'll, uh, I'll have a look at this, say in about 11 days, dry hop it, and then it will be moving on to the bottling. So, so yeah, so that's uh, basically simple as can really get it for a brew day stove top with well possibly some stuff that you've already got around the kitchen okay cheers okay so hopefully you enjoyed that uh, footage um, this is going to be part one of uh, basically can you brew in the kitchen uh, on your stove top with um, some of the stuff that you may already have and obviously just buying the, the grain kit um, if you buy, like I say, if you go to these uh, websites, which are in this, the uh, description, they have kits and it's a really good way of getting into this if you really want to. Um, so this is just, like I say, it's part one. Part two will be the dry hop. I'll show you how to do the dry hop. I'll, I will not show you how to do it, but I'll show you how I do it and if you want to do that as well. Um, and then I'll do the bottling as well. So part two will be the dry hop and then the bottling. And then part three will be the final, basically opening the beer, 
giving it a taste and showing you what it looks like. So, so yeah, so hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully you've lasted this long with me. I know this is gonna be a long video, but it is more of a how-to and it's some a video that you're gonna, if you want to, you can just revisit. That's what the aim of it is really. I just wanted to try and pass on um, some, some of my experience. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, don't forget, have a brew when you're brewing. I like to keep it tea or coffee. Cheers. Mm -hmm.